Ark Survival Ascended Q&A. Shastasaurus Saddle Revealed. And a final farewell to official PvP. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to your regular ARC community news. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So, the community crunch just dropped with a trailer. It's not a trailer. It's music. All right, I'm going to play this as I'm reading what they wrote in commemoration of the closure of the official servers, I'm guessing. As we stand on the horizon between the ending of an era and the dawn of the next, we'll take a moment to reflect on the extraordinary journey we've shared. Your exuberance, sense of community, and the vivid tapestry of experiences you've woven in the world of Ark Survival Evolved have truly brought our creation to life. You're the beating heart of our little dinosaur game. Some might consider the upcoming transition a bittersweet occasion punctuated by a sense of loss and sadness. We feel otherwise. Unofficial ASE is in great hands, yours. But as one chapter concludes, another unfolds and again, our stories will mix with yours to create something greater than the sum of two parts. Remember, it's not farewell. It's see you real soon with more ASA news, reveals, gameplay, and ultimately, the launch of Ark Survival Ascended near the end of October. So survivors, thank you for eight incredible years, and here's to many more. With heartfelt gratitude and dino-sized enthusiasm, Studio Wildcard Team. Got me a bit, man. Wow. Well, that was a bit unexpected. <laughs> We've got to now react to the Shastasaurus has been revealed in all dossier form. Wow. The saddle. Oh, it looks good. Oh. Shastasaurus has weaponized the ultrasonic chirps it uses for echolocation. It can focus those sounds into a tight cone that disorients prey or widens the effect to blast apart a school the fish in a concussive wave so it can be fitted with a periscope torpedo bays and a cargo hold dude so they are and have committed to a platform saddle as suggested by the submission that's unreal and the size of this thing is something insane on top good grief they have committed, and we will be seeing this with the center. I can't wait to see more of this. It's looking good. Wow. But forget all that with people. We've officially got a Q&A for Ark Survival Ascended questions with answers. Let's go through them, and let's unpack everything we need to know. So, what is it? <laughs> Next Gen Remake of Ark Survival Evolved. As we know, when is it launching? End of October. They've said it time and time again. They're keeping it nice and clear. It is indeed the end of October. Jumping, dropping on PC, Xbox Series S and X, PlayStation 5, Windows or Steam. Why are they doing it? There are various reasons they've decided to take this approach. One is to refine the development team skills on UE5 to get them prepped for Ark 2. And another factor is for business reasons. There you go. There you go. They've actually been upfront and honest about why this is happening. Developing a next gen sequel will no longer release paid expansions. They need to continue generating revenue while they develop Arc 2. It's genuinely really refreshing to hear them be open about this and the reason why this is happening. It's for money for R2 and they've reiterated R2 is being designed as a souls like adventure wow so they want to provide the community with an evergreen classic arc experience that they can continue to grow over time on a cleaned up code base and that right there ladies and gents cleaned up code base is a very valid piece indeed it could certainly 
redefine arc as we know it it really could but also they've been working on a lot of new things how are they leveraging it well the code base has been rewritten it's artwork recreated by hand to take full advantage of the unreal engine 5 and its lumin and nanite advanced graphics fluid ninja now confirms the footage that we showed last weekend confirmed right there it is going to be a thing oh complete interactive physical foliage systems to create a beautiful immersive next-gen experience obviously our cross-platform modding that we've spoken about before that they're working with overwolf to provide an industry first cross-platform and modding experience where mods created on pc are delivered directly to your consoles from a custom modding back-end and in-game user mod browser an in-game browser well there we go so it won't be server-based it will certainly be through the game the modern capability for creators includes using the full power of ue5 including blueprints to create anything any kind of content or gameplay within arc with full cross-platform multiplayer and all the content we're getting 11 brand new creatures new minimap system expect something like the sotif map new structures display cases smaller tech tps building pieces new gameplay items dynamic navigation mesh and creature pathfinding overhaul something they, they've gone through these before photo mode new camera systems for players and dinos new player character assets with revamped and improved customization something i'm very very excited to see gamepad virtual cursor ui input very interested maybe they're going to do something like what the switch port currently does and a new dino manager system view the real-time status and track locations of all your creatures at will so you'll be able to know where every single one of your creatures is on the map at any one time but anyway that was covering stuff we already knew i don't remember that last bit though however questions pre-orders are we getting access to it early no not happening you can purchase the game towards the end of october where they're going to reveal the trailer and related media there are no plans for anyone getting this game early <laughs> but yeah no it is what it is no intentions to release exclusive content only available at launch as we intend to set the game live immediately when it's ready to purchase you cannot preload it so we get to unpack crossplay a little bit more a three-phase system for rolling out crossplay this is because it allows us to iterate more rapidly after launching a fresh title i'm curious if this is what i anticipated so october crossplay will be enabled for xbox pc and ps5 but it will not work for steam pc at launch why when they launch the game we'll have to patch a lot because you're going to find things we miss or break the game in ways they never identified and they prefer to patch the steam platform very quickly to resolve these issues with the rest of the platforms catching up. Once the game has passed the launch hurdles and has entered a more stable state, certifying other platforms, it'll be much quicker. And so at that point, they'll be looking into enabling full crossplay. So Steam, you're on your own. Xbox, PS5 and Windows PC, you can all play together. Okay, but they're gonna split official servers between the crossplay platforms. They also intend to host some servers that are crossplay only between Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 to keep out the PC Master Race folks. So they're going to have servers for just Xbox and PS5 as well. Very interesting to keep those people happy. Makes sense. And then what? At December, hopefully, that's the ETA, crossplay will be enabled to all platforms, meaning Steam can play with xbox and vice versa at this point it will be at a stage where the game can be fully enabled for all platforms where what this means that it'll be aiming to patch all platforms simultaneously which is just a mind-blowing thing and keep them running on the same version and at this point steam users will be able to play on the same servers as their console friends directly this applies to both official and unofficial servers, but don't worry, they'll still have separate official networks online that is restricted to just Xbox and PlayStation users. Very, very interesting. And something I anticipate is that they might close off certain platforms until they're happy everything's running smoothly. There we go. It's happening, but not until December can everybody play together. But console users, Xbox and PlayStation, you can play just on your own 
cross-play clusters yourself. In 2024, cross-progression isn't going to be enabled with full cross-play because they're going to integrate some forthcoming updates to the Epic online services system. We don't have an exact time frame for that because it's out of their control and the integration may take some time. Plus, we'll still work out the kinks for how we intend to enable cross-progression for existing accounts. I'm guessing, I'm assuming this is progressing to other servers, other maps. That's how I interpret it. That would be you progressing to the next map you're meant to be playing. Is that what cross progression means? I'm going to assume it is, and it sounds like, no, you won't be able to do that. If you want to play on the new maps, you'll have to stick within your clusters. But what changes have been made to the servers? A few. First of all, they're increasing the stasis replication range for structures significantly and dinos by about 70%. That means you'll be able to see them from further away before they de-render. Additionally, they'll be making use of instance rendering for all their structure tile sets. Think building pieces, meaning bases are going to run a lot better, obviously using the UE5 engine. And they'll be keeping the servers capped at 70 players. No increased cap. I kind of wondered if they'd increase it any further than 70. No, they're going to keep it at 70. With a lot of other changes they've made, they've had to make some trade-offs. And right now, the tech isn't quite there to increase the slot cap much higher. By evaluating this over time and see whether we can increase it as further engine upgrades and optimizations come through. Of course, player-run unofficial servers can increase to 100 plus players and that is highly viable if they reduce the stasis replication range or lower the maximum dino counts. Very interesting there that there is going to be some limitations that they're already expecting and processing power will have to be dialed back to accommodate more players. What content changes have been made for day one? Here we go people, here's the nitty gritty. Hot topics, hot topics indeed. What have we got? Generally, they intend to release content based on the map it launched with. It doesn't matter when it launched. For example, the rafts will be available on day one and the Rhino Nether on the island. However, tech creature variants and cryopods will not be available. Well, there we go, ladies and gents. Cryopods, not from the off. You get the island content and the island content only. They have done a pass on caves with some balance adjustments to choke points and improve the cave's internal appearance. Very interested on that. Of course, looking at North Snow in particular, being a very difficult choke point indeed. What exactly have they done with that? And the hesitant to make dramatic changes to cave balances while the meta in ASE had flaws. They didn't feel a complete overhaul was wise between these changes and other adjustments throughout the game. They're expecting to see some shifts in the metas players create. And they plan to monitor the impact of these moving parts in the hands of thousands of players and pivot as needed post-launch. So what we got? Overhaul building, disabled leveling of movement speed on creatures and players. Oh, oh, that is a controversial one right there. And something that was quite recently touched upon by HUD that I got involved with the conversation of. And something we noticed in The Hunted that by dialing back movement speed really does limit and create a whole different type of survival. But damn, then they are disabling movement speed completely. That is super interesting. And what sort of dynamic that's going to create. Small dino QOL changes, breeding changes. This one sounds scary. We know our products and QA teams are freaking out about it, but generally our intention hasn't been to change the strength of creatures, but to make the implementation cleaner. Previously, mutations were based on a creature's wild stat multiplier, and now we've given it its multiplier. This has led to some creatures receiving some buffs or nerfs in particular stats, but they intend to rebalance this over time as they evaluate their roles in the meta. We'll want your feedback on that. So what they have done, they have not fixed getting more than 20 mutations, which is great because that's certainly something that keeps players in ARC engaged, moving beyond the 20 mutations. But they have removed the 255 cap so that servers can specify a cap. And they'll leave it on officials for 255. So it's open to adjustments. So the way I'm reading this is the mutations <laughs> that we know today and the guide that I just recently written, no more. The 20 slot thing won't be an issue anymore. You'll be able to mutate way past that. 
<laughs> RIP guide. Of course, these examples don't cover everything. As you expect to see redesigned in ASA, we could wax lyrical about the environment, water, sky. I want you to wax lyrical about that. And how adorable wild babies are, but we'll get the game speak a thousand words really soon. But at the very least, with them confirming Fluid Ninja, we get an idea of what to expect for the videos that we saw prior. Character creation overhaul. So it's paramount to the art team that they are able to overhaul the character creation system for ASA. So the characters look less survival jank. <laughs> they successfully did that. But then we decided to say, screw it and allow you to mess with all the bones and scalers anyway. So we can make some absolute abominations once again in ASA. That's great. Or you can make something that feels nice and polished uh, if you choose to. <laughs> that's, but next gen, that's great. They've actually highlighted <laughs> the booming Gareth Coker music that you get in the main menu. <laughs> it's their new Gareth Coker music. Not confirming, but say sorry in main menu. You can't hear us over the Gareth Coker music. New Gareth Coker music, may I add, meaning there is new Gareth Coker music. A joy indeed. They're working very closely with Nvidia and all things to have a bunch of stuff, DLSS, RTX, DI, and frame gen. I'm not gonna lie, I know nothing about that. I'm gonna skip straight over that. And why 5.2, why not 5.3? Because engine 5.3 is a relative recent release and they're keeping up with it, though they may update to that. They're cherry picking some things from 5.3, such as nav mesh improvements, as well as the landscape. And over time, that'll continue to upgrade the entire engine to 5.3 and beyond. So when's gameplay? We will see it before we purchase the game in October. They're not getting any more specific about that. So what about cheaters? They'll still be working with an anti-cheat for ASA. They won't be sharing any more information about anti-cheat as it doesn't benefit anyone to do so. Look forward to seeing what this is and how they're going to combat that, especially with cross-platform. And it's something that is going to work cross-platform as well. Really, really hope whatever they've built in place does the job. And I'm hoping with the correct foundation this time, maybe they will. And with the experience on top, maybe they will. Maybe it's a possibility, right? Sotif. They're going back to the name Sotif. It felt easier to say than Tusatif. But more importantly, Sotif will not be available at launch. We still intend to do it, but they're putting all their time and resources, energy, sweat, and blood into remastering the game. I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised. They seem to get super quiet about Sotif 5.0. They seem to get super quiet about Sotif recently. Yeah, I'm not surprised it's not at launch. Bit of a shame. I'm hoping they're not just completely giving up because it did start to die off the last few months. Uh, but they are going to tackle at remastering Sotif for a winter release. Okay, there we go. Winter. Oh, as an in-game downloadable mod for a winter release. Okay, well, it's coming in a modded form. So will there still be a queue? There will not be a queue system at launch given that they intend to have it implemented with SOTIF. They're going to bring a new queuing system that they briefly mentioned prior when they bring SOTIF in. With concerns about queue butting, they're going to be monitoring and making sure it's server-side configurable that they can disable for their networks and implement measures to prevent this. Events! Extra Life! ASA content! Yes, 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 and yes, they're all coming. The first ASA event will be Extra Life! So, super rates straight from the off as soon as the game comes out. Bonus rates and all that jazz. And all that jazz! <laughs> it's like words coming straight out of my mouth, dude. But they'll be doing their first content related event in December with the launch of Winter Wonderland. Okay, a bit of a shame. I was hoping they might try and force Fear Evolved out, but I appreciate, you know, it's very, very tight. Winter Wonderland will be our first event. And just as mentioned above, ASA has its own content roadmap, but it's too soon to talk about that. Creature submissions, it's taken them so long to get the Shasta dossier done, threw in a bit of a spanner in their calendar for doing creature votes, but they're taking a break from the vote fatigue, and it seems they'll be readdressing it for other maps in the future. And finally, they seem to have an intention to be more directly engaged with the community we've been reading and monitoring throughout, trust us. So we'll be seeing more Q and A's, streams, etc. Great news, great to see. I hope and look forward to these people. And of course, the Discord. Go check it out if you want to learn more about Ark Survival Ascended and its launch. With another shout out to us once again, 
massive, massive love. Really appreciate that. Very, very cool of them to shout us out twice in a row. Oh, wow. DMAC is now creator Ross Clark. It's fine. I'm sure it's a typo. I'm guessing they meant to link DMAC's vid. Deserves it. Great first video. And Fire Pumpkin got a shout out too with their Captain Fire's She Santi. Very nice. They, they completely butchered that, that one. Yarl. <laughs> so, Tia Aura, who also covers ARC News, found a little source from Doug Kennedy, CEO and co founder of Studio Wildcard, announcing and confirming that CurseForge will be their cross platform modding partnership, not Overwolf, though seems to be under the umbrella of Overwolf, but certainly a different delivery altogether. An app store in its own right, and it'll be interesting to see how they integrate this with servers. If you forgot, they were at Gamescom some time ago and openly announced they were working with Ark during this conference. Official servers are gone. That's it. The end of official servers is here, folks. It's kind of a bit weird to think right now, by the time I've posted this, I believe there is no official servers anymore. They're being repurposed for Ark Survival Ascended. Now, don't get too worried, people out there that have rented unofficial servers. You still will be able to play on those for the duration of ASC, assuming ASC servers will run for an indefinite period. But it's certainly going to leave at least official players out in the loop for the next month, guessing, assuming that we're going to see ASA at the end of October. And what are they going to do up until that? Well, Mr. Dolphin shared a Ark World map targeting knowing the different mega tribes across each platform to, I guess, start developing strategies for <laughs> when ASA official arrives. In fact, Mr. Dolphin's not the only one. I was given this excellently illustrated diagram too, making me think a lot of people, those official players out there especially, are going to be sitting, rocking back and preparing strategy upon strategy for when those official servers launch on day one. Speaking of PvP, a lot of you already know out there, and it's good to see confirmed recently by Dolly that she used to be on PvP unofficial with the Megas slugging it out until Extinction arrived around Extinction where Dolly then joined Wildcard and as a result has a keen eye on that experience leading on to Dolly mentioning she may be guest starring in some Mega Tribes to make sure it's all playing out as they'd hoped. And Dolly's not the only one that got into Studio Wildcard from being a player. In fact, there's a lot of people who came from that background, most recently up from the depths and GG Fizz influencing what they know and love about Ark. And it'll be interesting to see what they've influenced for ASA when we receive it. Something else that's being prepared for day one is the Discord has now changed to play arc it was arc survival evolved now moved on to play arc very small piece of news here but worth mentioning that that's it ase asa are now part of that franchise and hopefully you know arc animated tv series comes along at some point i know no news really to talk about there who knows at this point maybe we'll get a platform soon enough and arc 2 when that arrives at some point all form the big umbrella giant franchise that will be Play Arc now, that is seemingly their message going forward and the Discord name that you can now go and join if you want to learn more about Arc. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Nooblitz reached out to me recently, very kind of Nooblitz to do so. Looking at the exclusivity agreement that Snail Games had with Natrado for these ASA servers. Now it's a very long convoluted plot that we've talked about many times before and I'm pretty sure I mentioned this when we discussed it a few weeks ago but for those that don't know it does read like if Ark Survival Ascended drops after October then Natrado will possibly have exclusivity to all of the servers for Ark Survival Evolved leading some to speculate well do they actually want to do that on purpose and have Natrado controlling all servers for all 
platforms. Me, I'm not too worried about that just yet. I think for console, it certainly might be an issue. I think you may be tied to one server provider and one server provider only. But PC, I think you'll have at least some fluidity on what you can and can't do with root servers available for example but either way i do get the feeling arc survival ascended will drop in october the devs have reiterated it's going to be at the end of october and you know if they want to save some money and not hand over any exclusivity for arc survival evolved then surely they would want to do that only time will tell upon that but something that did spring up very recently was an employee of studio wildcard you may not have heard of them but they are quite frequent and well known within the community adam the little panda that looks after live ups and server admin dropped a tweet that seemed to elude discussing this whole drama we've had with decisions being made from the top saying stressing that they just wish ceos and bosses would stop making decisions that impact everyone below them wondering was this indirectly targeting at the decisions that have been made over the years in specifically this arc survival ascended upgrade originally meant to be free but now a paid remaster but i do feel there was a very big difference from what it was originally to what it was now but it could have simply been touching on the redundancies being made for epic employees but you know a lot of you have saw that tweet and a lot of you have took it as that, so had to be reported. Drama, drama always, drama never fails. <laughs> but something very anti-drama, extra life. Me and Aaron Longstaff have done these year upon year, have raised a lot of money for a great cause on behalf of Studio Wildcard, and we're doing it again with some very interesting ideas we're talking about at the moment under a cool challenge being set out, created, hopefully, by the architects and well you know if you already want to get involved and help support us reach this insane goal of ten thousand dollars i know we set the bar pretty high this time but i think we can do it right i'll leave a link in the description we may be doing giveaways as we lead up to this date at the end of october as well around asa releasing and look forward to sharing what exactly we're going to be doing for charity overlooking of course that this is our first look in a way Vark Survival Ascended, Green Arb, Volcano, Helena, Raptor, everything shadowed, doesn't reveal too much, little tease for us. But good grief, a lot of information unpacked for us today. Did you agree? Are you excited? Comment below, let me know. Until the next one, my name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, uh, uh, peace out. Uh.